Veneto is located in the north of Italy on the Adriatic coast. The capital of the Veneto region is Venice. High mountains and hiking trails or high mountain tours, historic cities like Verona and Padua, palazzi or castles and magnificent gardens, Veneto was once culturally, scientifically as well as economically leading in Europe and this is still noticeable today. Extensive sandy beaches on the Italian Adriatic coast and lively seaside resorts such as Bibiani or Jesolo, the spectacular lagoon city of Venice with its little sister Chiorgia, nature parks, amusement parks, culinary highlights, wine-growing areas and more, the Veneto region scores with pronounced versatility. If you like this video, Please support our channel with a like, comment or subscription. Thank you. And love dares what love can do says William Shakespeare's masterpiece Romeo and Juliet. In Verona, the northern Italian setting of the world's best-known love story, people still dare what love can do today. Preferably on Juliet's balcony and forever. For many tourists it is cult to marry on the balustrade of Juliet's residence. There, where Romeo once swore his love to her on a ladder at night. Even today, Juliet, the adored one, gets letters delivered to the Casa di Giulietta, one of Verona's landmarks. Without a doubt, Verona, along with Venice, is considered the destination for romantics. And those who don't want to get married can enjoy a relaxing weekend in the UNESCO protected old town with its numerous galleries, museums and churches. Verona also stands for passion like no other city because of the opera. The world-famous festival takes place every July to September in the Arena di Verona in the historic center at Piazza Bra. Every two or three days, classics such as Verdi's Nabucco, La Traviata and Rigoletto or Puccini's Tuandot and Tosca resound from the ancient amphitheater, which is 140 meters long and 110 meters wide. When, from 9 p.m. on, the opera artists blare their powerful voices into the sky and the stars shine in addition, the four-hour opera experience is perfect. Bassano del Grappa is particularly popular with visitors for its charming old town, which has many characteristic palazzi and historic buildings. The Brenta River flows directly through the center of the city and, with its magnificent waterfront promenades, characterizes the image and relaxed atmosphere of the city. There is hardly anything more beautiful than enjoying a delicious dinner in one of the restaurants in the center, while letting your eyes wander over the river panorama. Bassano del Grappa shows its most beautiful side in the cozy old town, which exudes a lot of historical flair. Most famous here is the Ponte Vecchio, a wooden bridge from the 16th century. Also worth seeing are the city's cathedral and the numerous striking building ensembles, for example in the Piazza Libertà. However, the most important attraction of Bassano del Grappa is the famous Villa Ongarono, a luxurious mansion from the middle of the 16th century. Because of its magnificent architecture, the villa was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. The dreamy village of Borghetto is located in the province of Verona in Veneto, very close to the border with Lombardy. The delightful medieval fortified village belongs to the locality of Villeggio Salmincio, but has its very own charm. Narrow streets, historic mills, some still in operation, water wheels and medieval cottages characterize the image of this storybook village. In the background, Villeggio's 13th-century Scalagerberg castle towers into the sky. The romantic village, which, connected by a bridge, lies to the left and right of the Mincio River, is especially popular for wedding ceremonies. 
On the banks of the Mincio you will find a number of cafes and restaurants, and in the center of Borghetto some nice little craft stores. Also worth a detour is the 18th century church of San Marco Evangelista. Borghetto is home to the Ponte Viscontio, a very unusual structure dating back to the 14th century, the present bridge was originally built as a fortified dam. The intention was to dam up the Mincio River at this point in order to cut off the water supply to the enemy city of Mantua, but this did not happen in the end. The imposing stone bridge is over 600 meters long and a good 20 meters wide. In the 1920s, an iron bridge was inserted into the walls, which today allows car traffic. The picturesquely situated northern Italian small town of Marostica is located about 30 kilometers north of Vicenza. The town, which has a population of about 14,000, is surrounded by a large city wall dating from the 14th century. With its numerous towers, the city gate Porta Vicentina and the castle, Marostica is considered one of the most beautiful fortified cities in Italy. However, Marostica is most famous for a chess game with living pieces on a huge chessboard in the castle square in the center of the town. Every two years, every second weekend in September, a three-day chess festival is held here. At this legendary event, the game pieces wear historical costumes. First held in 1923, the chess tournament has its origins in the 15th century. In 1454, the two noblemen Ronaldo Dongarono and Vieri Vallanara simultaneously asked for the hand of Leonora, the daughter of the lord of the castle Todio Parisio. The father wanted to avoid unnecessary bloodshed at all costs. Therefore he organized a big public chess tournament with living figures in the center of Marostica. The winner, Vieri Vallanara, was to marry Leonora, while the loser was to marry the younger daughter. Connoisseurs look twice and then fall in love, this is how Treviso, Venice's little sister, can become the favorite place of all those who like Italian flair, wide skies and cities shaped by water. City of Waters, the Italians affectionately call Treviso. Located 30 kilometers from Venice, Treviso offers a decelerated Venetian magic. As is so often the case in Italian cities, a charming piazza is the starting and ending point of all discovery tours. In Treviso it is called Piazza dei Signori and is framed by the city tower and magnificent palaces. In the Town Hall Palace, artistic frescoes can be admired. As beautiful as the medieval architecture of the city presents itself to the visitor, the interior of the buildings usually opens up other revelations worth seeing. The Rector's Chapel in Treviso, for example, features gilded leather wallpaper, ornate friezes and extraordinary paintings. Strolling through Treviso, one can feel the monastic purity of the alleys and buildings at every turn. In the middle of the city lies the small river island of Pescaria. Twice a week, the Treviso fish market takes place here. No less than three canals run through the center of the city. Such a guided waterway also nestles around the city wall from the 16th century. Arcades and water wheels line the walk in northern Treviso, a city where people live with water and have charmingly integrated it into the cityscape through the centuries. The eastern shore of Lake Garda is overlooked by the peaks of Monte Baldo. The nature park Integrale La Stoni Selva Petsi reaches an altitude of over 2,200 meters. Hikers and mountain bikers will find many beautiful trails in an alpine setting. Paragliders take off from the back of Monte Baldo for hour-long flights over Lake Garda. To vacationers on the lakeshore, they appear as small colorful dots in the azure sky. Small hamlets hang like swallows' nests on the western flank of the mountains, enchanting with pristine simplicity and fantastic views of Lake Garda and its western shore. Small towns line the eastern shore of Lake Garda like a string of pearls along the Garda Zana Oriental waterfront road. Sounding names like Molchazine, Garda or Bardolino are among them, each of the towns has its very own charm. 
Historic castles bear witness to the long history of the region and the many small beaches and sunbathing areas invite you to swim. The town of Kaul combines an impressive sea panorama and wonderful sandy beaches with a varied entertainment offer. Especially in the summer months, vacationers enjoy the pleasant Mediterranean climate and the relaxing atmosphere on the Gulf of Venice. Those who spend their vacation in Kaul take walks along the 25 km long beaches or discover the culinary specialties of the region. In the old town, as on the coast, numerous restaurants and bars invite you to enjoy the local delicacies while overlooking the deep blue sea. A shopping tour through the city center, a trip to the surrounding major cities or simply relaxing by the sea, Kaol is ideal for an unforgettable family vacation. If you are interested in the country and its people, explore the historic center of Kaol and visit the impressive sites. Among the most important attractions of the city is the Romanesque Cathedral of Kaul from the 11th century, which houses the Museo Liturgico. In addition, vacationers should definitely take a trip to Porto Santa Margarita. The resort was built for guests of the city and is best known for its impressive marina. Ravigo is located in the heart of the Polacine area and is gently caressed by the sea breeze of the nearby Po Delta. Although the city is less known than other places in the Veneto region, it holds artistic, cultural and scenic highlights. The city originated as an episcopal estate, and monuments and palazzi were added in the Middle Ages. Above the buildings rise the city's landmarks, the Donia and Matza Towers, testimonies of the ancient medieval fortifications. The Venetian domination is remembered in the city center by the stately buildings of Palazzo Roncale and Palazzo Rovarella, today the seat of the important Accademia dei Concordi painting collection, which hosts important contemporary exhibitions. Of particular interest is the sanctuary of the Beta Vergine del Sorcorso, also called the Rotanda because of its octagonal floor plan. The church tower is the work of the famous architect Longena. Of particular importance for Rovigo is the Museo dei Grandi Fiumi, dedicated to the rural population and its history, a life between land and water, influenced by the rhythms of life of the River Po and the nearby sea. The wine village of Soave is a small town and, like the Soave wine region, is not particularly well known to tourists. All the more local excursionists feel comfortable here. For good reason, on the edge of a beautiful hilly landscape, Soave is surrounded by a historic town wall dating back to 1379 with 24 towers in the very best condition. Above the village towers a castle that matches the medieval ambience. Incidentally, the present wine village was first founded as a Roman garrison. The Scaliger Castle is privately owned, but can still be visited. From the top there are magnificent views of the countryside. Several churches are worth a visit, such as the parish church of San Lorenzo Martire or the Dominican Church. Particularly beautiful is also the Palazzo del Capitano, under whose arches today you can enjoy the wines and food of the region in style. In the small and well-arranged town center, everything revolves around wines and other culinary highlights. Restaurants, wine stores, regional specialties, ice cream parlors and direct sales of some wineries invite you to enjoy a meal, a good sip of wine, to buy good drops and to linger. The ambience here is stunningly Italian.
The two-kilometer-long ring of walls with 24 towers, four gates and a wide, green moat surrounds the town. Montagnana looks like an impregnable medieval castle, which time seems to have passed without a trace. The perfectly preserved and intensively maintained city walls are one of the most beautiful city fortifications in Europe. The fort and the mighty Ezzelino defense tower at Porta Padova are the centerpiece of the complex. The tower is the oldest surviving monument in the city. The opposite gate is dominated by the Rocca degli Alberi. It is an exemplary testimony of military construction of that period. Built in only two years, 1360 to 1362, this fortified citadel blends in with the city walls, making the gate almost impregnable. Piazza Vittorio Emanuele is the heart of Montagnana and is surrounded by medieval house fronts and porticos. It bears witness to the Venetian domination of Montagnana, under which the town went from being a military base to a rich commercial city. The imposing cathedral, still purely Gothic on the outside but already Renaissance on the inside, was completed in 1502 after a good 70 years of construction. Asurlo in Veneto is one of the Borghi Piu Belli d'Italia, the most beautiful places in Italy. But it is also famous for its excellent Prosecco, the Asurlo Prosecco Superiore Doc. Asurlo's old town is characterized by the 12th century fortress. Besides it, the Cathedral of Santa Maria Assunta, the Villa Scotti Pacini and the Castello della Regina Cornaro are among the main sites of the city. The remains of an amphitheater and an aqueduct date back to Roman times. The mighty fortress has a height of 15 meters and a width between 2.5 and 3.5 meters. The defensive structure was built towards the end of the 12th century. A predecessor of the cathedral existed already in 969. In the middle of the 18th century the church received its present shape. Inside there is Lorenzo Lotto's famous painting The Assumption of Mary. The castle, with its clock tower visible from afar, was the seat of the city governors of Venice from the middle of the 14th century. In 1489 it became the residence of Caterina Cornaro, wife of the King of Cyprus, whose name it still bears today. The northern Italian city of Chiorgia is located in the south of the Venice Lagoon. What also connects Chiorgia with the famous commercial metropolis is that the city was also built on wooden piles and has many dreamlike canals. During a relaxed stroll through the historic old town, vacationers experience characteristic palaces and the magnificent panorama of the Gulf of Venice. In addition, the city in the Veneto region has several sites and wonderful white beaches. The cozy restaurants and bars on the Spiaggia di Sottomarina invite you to taste regional specialties while looking out over the picturesque sea panorama. Among the most beautiful attractions of Chiorgia are the numerous churches of the city, which visitors should definitely visit. Especially worth seeing is the imposing Cattedrale di Santa Maria Assunta with the Porta di Santa Maria. The sacred building was built at the beginning of the 12th century and impresses guests of the city with its Baroque architecture. The metropolis of Vicenza in northern Italy impresses with Italian lightness and Mediterranean flair. Renaissance architect Andrea Palladio left his mark on it by creating grandiose buildings that are still the destination of visitors from home and abroad. Named city of Palladio by UNESCO and marveled by travelers, Vicenza invites to interesting discovery tours. Vicenza, capital of the province of the same name, is located in the Italian region of Veneto about 65 kilometers northwest of Venice. The first traces of settlement here date back to the 3rd and 2nd centuries BC, 
and in 157 BC the Roman city was given the name Vincentia. After many centuries of sieges and reconstructions, the architect Andrea Palladio managed to make his mark on Vicenza with his incredible buildings. Under his supervision, villas, palaces, statues and sacred buildings were built, many of which have survived the centuries and are still important landmarks in the city today. Vicenza is known far beyond the borders of Italy not only as a fashion metropolis, but also as a jewelry manufactory. More than 1,000 goldsmiths live and work in the city and provide their customers with wonderful creations that regularly cause a sensation internationally. The image of the city of Belluno is characterized above all by the striking Dolomites, which lie to the north of the city. Belluno is also an attractive vacation destination thanks to the rivers Ardo and Piave, which flow directly through the city and whose banks invite you to take relaxing walks. Beautiful is also the old town, which impresses the visitor with its many historical, cozy squares and characteristic palaces. Especially in the evening, it is worthwhile to discover the local specialties in the inviting restaurants and bars of the city and enjoy the view of the unique mountain panorama. Last but not least, guests of the town can always take an excursion into the untouched nature and thus get to know the area from its original side. Belluno has some interesting buildings that vacationers should definitely visit during their stay in the city. Worth seeing, for example, is the Basilica di San Martino, which was built in the 16th century. The Chiesa di San Rocco and the Chiesa di San Pietro also score with impressive architecture and many works of art. An important attraction in Belluno is also the Palazzo dei Retori, which was completed at the end of the 15th century. Numerous impressive sites are located in Piazza del Duomo, where the Fontana di San Glota is also located. Today, the cityscape of Padua is characterized above all by a colorful student life and a historical backdrop. Padua is one of the oldest cities in Italy. Although it has been destroyed several times in the course of its history, numerous buildings and sites still bear witness to its eventful past. Strolling through the city center of Padua, one notices, in addition to the many imposing buildings, the spatial generosity with which the city was laid out. The Prato della Valle in the center is one of the largest squares of its kind in Europe. From here you can easily reach some of Padua's historical highlights on foot. Among the most famous sites of Padua is undoubtedly the Basilica of St. Anthony, with its eight domes and two bell towers, which also houses his tomb. It dates back to the 13th century and impresses above all with its mixture of Lombard, Tuscan and Byzantine architecture. No less interesting is the 5th century Basilica of St. Justina, which today serves as the patron saint of Padua. To immerse yourself in the flair of bygone days, you should pay a visit to Café Padrochi. For a long time it was considered the meeting place of Europe's intellectuals, and Lord Byron is also said to have dined here. Fantastic slopes in winter, green valleys and peaks in summer, in the midst of the scenic mountain world of the Italian Dolomites lies the fashionable vacation resort of Cortina d'Ompezzo. Since the 1970s, Cortina d'Ompezzo has been the meeting place for all the big names. Cortina d'Ompezzo is located at an altitude of 1,211 meters in the Ampezzo Alps. Cortina's inhabitants speak Italian and the Romanche dialect Ladin. After the end of World War II, Cortina d'Ompezzo developed into one of the most popular winter sports resorts in the Alps. In 1956 the town hosted the Winter Olympics, which contributed enormously to its popularity. 
Today, Cortina Dompezzo is an attractive resort for those who like to be active, both in summer and winter. Professional ski schools, picturesquely located mountain huts, equipment rental and fantastic slopes, in Cortina Dompezzo winter sports vacationers can spend a relaxing and active stay. With a total of 140 kilometers of slopes and 38 lifts, Cortina Dompezzo is one of the largest winter sports centers in the Alps. Also in the summer months, active vacationers in Cortina Dompezzo get their money's worth. The pleasantly fresh mountain climate and the numerous recreational opportunities attract mainly Italian vacationers to the Dolomites. The surroundings of Cortina Dompezzo are crisscrossed by many hiking trails where you can discover nature and the beauty of the Dolomites up close. Yesolo is one of the most famous seaside resorts on the Adriatic and is located only 20 kilometers from Venice. The lagoon area around Yesolo invites to leisurely boat trips inland. Culinary highlights can be enjoyed in the many restaurants along the rivers Piave and Sile, in the middle of which Yesolo is located. Yesolo is a seaside resort that lacks nothing, golden sand in front of an azure sea, shady pine groves that extend to the mouth of the Piave River, and the Lido di Yesolo with its unique promenade that invites you to stroll along the beach. In addition, Yesolo is a city that attracts with unspoiled nature, a magnificent lagoon landscape and wonderful green spaces. Extensive bike rides, long walks and excursions on horseback fascinate guests who travel to Veneto to find peace and relaxation on vacation far from the hustle and bustle of big cities. The lagoon city of Venice appears fairytale-like and surreal. Built on millions of wooden piles around 500 AD, it gives the impression of floating on the water. Venice is rich in history, charm, art and traditions. Playful domes, noble palaces, gondolas and liners characterize the image of the water-washed city. The splendor of a playful Renaissance architecture meets the visitor here at every turn especially since Venice is small enough to be explored on foot. Seen from the air, the silhouette of Venice resembles a fish formed by 118 small islands. Running through the middle of this fish is the Grand Canal, the city's longest and most beautiful waterway. It runs like a four-kilometer long snake under Venice's 400 bridges. One of them leads to the magnificent St. Mark's Square in the Old Town. Where spices and luxury goods once arrived by ship, making the Republic of La Serenissima, the most serene, unimaginably rich, travelers from all over the world now arrive. Despite 15 million visitors a year, Venice's 60,000 inhabitants retain their traditions. For a chat, mostly men meet in small bars, away from St. Mark's Square, for an ombra. This is the name given to the local Prosecco, which is drunk both as an aperitif and with food. It is accompanied by fish and meatballs, stockfish, octopus, polenta, and mussels. If visitors want to experience an authentic Venice, they should try these delicacies away from San Marco, despite its architectural beauty. Explore on your own in small alleys what is genuine and typical, 